Okay, so this was another round of XP Talks. It's great to have you here, Luke. Uh, could you tell us a few words about yourself and the team? Okay. So, first, thank you for inviting me to, to the Space AMA. About myself, hello everyone, you can call me Luke. I'm a uh, head of community of Mrs. Browser. And uh, I, have been, I have joined crypto industry since uh, 2017, so got a little bit of experience. And before Mrs. Browser, me and some current members of Mrs. Browser, we started a community for crypto investors and we acquired 3 million users worldwide. So that's basically <laughs> a brief introduction about myself and some members of Mrs. team. Thank you, man. Wow, 3 million, that's very impressive. Um, can you tell us also a bit about your team, where you're located? Maybe um, who is on the team, like developers, designers? Uh, okay, yeah. We are quite decentralized. I'm uh, personally located in Paris right now, and some members are located in China and Singapore, some members in the US. Uh, okay, it makes a lot of sense. It's uh, pretty much the same for many uh, Web3 projects. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty clear. All right, so the, your flagship pro product is uh, a mobile browser, Web3 browser. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Um, we know that uh, mobile browsers are a bit different from uh, uh, <clears throat> laptop or personal computer browsers. And uh, the main feature is that you have to support uh, the apps and wallets inside the browser, uh, which is not available in a usual uh, browser, right? Yes. Right. So can you tell us which uh, operating systems, mobile operating systems you support and why you selected those? Uh, okay, right now we only got Android version on, on the market. You can download Mrs. Powder from uh, Google Play. And we got, actually we got two problems with our iOS version. The first one is that Apple Store is very slow and unfriendly to crypto applications. So actually we have developed an iOS version, but after we submitted to Apple Store, we got no response. We are still working on it. Anyway, and the second problem is that all the browsers on iOS have to use Safari browsing kernel, which makes running Chrome extensions impossible on all the iOS browsers. So our solution is that we have integrated the widget of MetaMask into our iOS version. But it also means you can only use MetaMask on our iOS version. Okay, so let me... Uh, Wrap up a little bit. Right now, we only got Android version. You can download it from the official Google Google Play. And we do have developed iOS version, but right now you cannot download it from the Apple Store. We are working on it, and we are working. We are doing some researching and studying about the iOS operating system to make more wallet available on our on our iOS version. Yeah, cool. So uh, you have 3 million users on Android uh, platform alone, right? Once you join uh, iOS, you will have approximately the same amount or more. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the 3 million is the community we developed before. It's not about Mrs. Bowder. About Mrs. Bowder right now, we have around 700,000 users in total. Okay, anyway, that's a lot. That's very impressive. So good job, guys. Right. Uh, so thank you for this uh, extensive explanation. And uh, thank you for being honest uh, that iOS is not available at the moment. And actually, it's, it's uh, quite clear. Uh, the reasons are quite reasonable. It is difficult to uh, work with Apple Store. They're very demanding and probably not very responsive. So it absolutely makes sense. I'm sure you guys um, get there. Maybe try to find some connections, some people who work there. Maybe it will be faster yes. to do it like this. Right. Uh, so why did you come up with the idea of uh, building a mobile browser for Web3? Uh, did you see an opportunity, a niche that wasn't occupied? What's the reason? What, what, are, what were the thoughts behind this idea? Okay, exactly. a very interesting story. So at the very beginning, 
we were trying to develop a decentralized social media dApp, okay? And to help our users to use our dApp, we developed Mrs. Bowser. And basically, you can only use our dApp on the first version of Mrs. Bowser, okay? And after some operation and survey about among our users, we found out that using extensions on mobile devices is a very strong demand for Web3 users. Because without Mrs. Browser, you, you can only uh, swap token or mint NFT on your computer or laptop, right? But you cannot have a computer or laptop anytime by your side. For example, if you if you uh, found out a trading opportunity, swapping opportunity, when you are riding the subway, what can you do? Basically nothing, let that opportunity slip away, okay? After finding this uh, demand, we start to add the support for Chrome extensions on Mrs. Browser. And now we are completely focused on this feature, the support for Chrome extensions on mobile phones, because it really has created the value for our users. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, absolutely agree with you. Uh, being available on mobile is critical today. Um, and uh, yes, many people use mobiles on the go or while they're riding to or from uh, the office home and backwards. So correct. I, I absolutely support you with that. And I'm sure the listeners too. Um, can you tell us what chains are supported inside your uh, browser or there is no, you don't have to mm -hmm. link to a specific mm -hmm. chain. Like whatever the wallet support, you support. How, how is it implemented in your application? Uh, yes. Basically, we can support all the blockchains because you can basically download any extensions you want to use, list it on Google Web Store to your Mrs. Browser. So uh, in that way, you can use your Mrs. Browser to access Google Web Store to download any extensions to Mrs. Browser, which means we basically support all the blockchains. And it is also an interesting yeah. story. We mm -hmm. have developed our own blockchain. It's called Mrs. Chain. It's based on Cosmos SDK. It's for our uh, decentralized storage system in the future, but it's another story. Yeah, yeah, we'll discuss it later. Let's just go gradually. We'll gradually get there. Don't worry. Uh, I know about your blockchain and we'll speak about it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, I know that there is a bunch of wallets that you support, right? Yep. And uh, c can you tell us which wallets, uh, which protocols those wallets support? Uh, is it possible to um, install any random wallet that is available or there are some limitations? Okay, so basically 90% of the existing wallet extensions available on Google Web Store can work perfectly on Mrs. Browser. The other 10%, I, I think maybe it's because they never consider about running the extension on mobile devices during the development, okay? But if our users find out such wallet, they will tell us we will try our best to contact and reach to those wallet extensions and tell them, hey, we got some users using your extension on Mrs. Cross and the mobile phones. Can you optimize this? Can you optimize that? This is uh, basically what I do every day. <laughs> Right, I got it. Okay, it's uh, it's great that you support up to 90% of the wallets out of the box. And uh, the rest, you just have to do some manual additional coding, probably, yeah. uh, to, to, to get it supported. So it's amazing. So your, your application is pretty universal, which sounds great. I also noticed, uh, read somewhere in your documentation or white paper, I don't remember where, that you support Web3 domain resolutions. So here, do you support some specific uh, domains? Or again, uh, you can support anything? Uh, no, right now we only support the resolution of ENS and top of a domain and dot bit. And, and, yeah, okay, three and beside mm -hmm. the resolution of domain name, we also support access to IPFS. So which means, for example, if you want to visit vitalik.tgh on other browsers, it's going to be a little bit complicated. But on Mrs. Browser, all you need to do is to write down vitalik.tgh in the address bar, and then we can do the resolution automatically for you because it's an ENS domain name. And also, we can help you to connect to the website, which is linked to uh, vitalik.tgh. It's uh, the 
whole state on IPFS, but we also got support for IPFS. So it's totally automatic. Wow, great. Uh, do you have any additional CDN for IPFS? Because from my experience, sometimes it can be super slow. Sometimes it's so slow that it even times out. But then when you try again without changing anything in your code, eventually it uh, arrives. So what's your experience with IPFS and how do you uh, improve user experience if you do? Uh, actually, I'm very sorry. This question is too technical for me. I don't really have any computer science uh, background. Okay, okay, okay. So but so according to my the experience, question? Okay, let's, let's move on to channel. Uh, yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah, but according to my experience visiting uh, IPFS, websites deployed on uh, IPFS uh, with your Mrs. Bowser is usually very fast. I don't know why, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. So I guess your team uh, just does something. I think uh, they're just uh, caching it, and probably you have some additional CDN, uh, which is Content Delivery Network, that works like this. Usually, uh, the content is requested somewhere, mm -hmm. and then the CDN network brings the content closer to where it was requested, and eventually it's available on multiple servers across the world, uh, closer to the user. So usually, this is it's done like this. But uh, I just wanted you to say this. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So since, since, since you are saying that it works quickly, uh, that's probably what you guys did. Okay. Thank you very much for explaining this to me. <laughs> Actually, my yeah, so, sorry for asking. You. Yes. Sorry for, for the question. Right. So, okay, let's move on to the blockchain finally. So the blockchain is called Mrs. And you said it's based on Cosmos ec ecosystem. Uh, can you tell us more about the chain? I saw that the code is in Go. It's written in Go. Uh, does it support EVM? Because I know that you can support EVM on uh, multiple protocols. For example, like Polkadot uh, parachains can support EVM if they install several pallets. Uh, so what, what about your chain? Actually, it's not EVM compatible because the reason we developed this blockchain is that we want to develop a decentralized storage system. So uh, the re and the reason that we want to develop a uh, decentralized story system is that we want our decentralized social media DAP to be completely decentralized, which means the personal data and the content generated by our users on this uh, social media DAP will be stored on our decentralized social. Uh, sorry, will be stored on our decentralized story system in the future. I see. That's very cool. Why have you decided to do that? There is IPFS, and you just said that it's fast for you. Why have you started this chain? Okay, because we think IPFS is it's not going to be uh, fast anymore if we decide to store some uh, large files on it. For example, like the video generated by our users. So uh, that's why. That's basically why. We develop our own decentralized social media. We think IPFS will not be suitable for social media that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, that makes a lot of sense, and I'm sure it will be in demand. Can you tell us more about this chain in terms of um, other transaction fees expensive or, uh, on the contrary, they're cheap? Um, is is the chain fast? Like uh, how many blocks per second, or how many? <laughs> Like, how long is the block, for example? How many transactions you can have in a block? And how is it different from the other chains? Actually, the, the gas fee is very, very slow. The gas fee is usually 0 0.0004 or 5 MIS token. And uh, yeah, the, the total uh, amount of MIS token is uh, 100 million. So you can see the gas fee is actually very, very low. And yes, it's, it's, it's uh, quite fast because we develop it for our decentralized social media app, right? Let me, let me take a look, okay? Right now. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, also, on, on CoinMarketCap, I, I saw that there's this MIS token. Um, is it listed somewhere on some DEXs, or how can people get it? Oh, okay. So about your last question, we generate one block each six seconds. Okay, okay that's, that's pretty usual. Yeah. Okay. And uh, about the current question, the answer is no. We haven't been listed on any exchanges or DEXs yet. Because the first thing that 
the, the first reason is that we believe we are still in a bear market. Okay, we will wait for like uh, next year to see how the market goes. If the market is going turning to bull, we will probably start launch the listing of MIST token. And the second reason is about uh, the number of your, the number of our users. Because if you don't have enough numbers in, of users inside your ecosystem, it, it's not just going to, going to support the price, right? Right, right. It makes sense. Right. Uh, is there a way to get your token now? Is there some maybe faucet? Is it a testnet uh, chain at yeah. the moment? Okay, so before you can verify your Twitter account to your message browser to receive an airdrop. Just to make sure you are not a robot and the amount of the airdrop you are going to receive is dependent on the traction of your Twitter account. This is before. So right now we uh, basically have canceled the airdrop for the new users. So before the, 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 the maximum airdrop you can receive is 100 miss token. Right now it's one miss token. So right now if you want to uh, have a uh, more miss token how can you do the first thing you can do is uh, uh do some work inside the community okay you can apply to be a moderator you can apply to be a part-time b staff for our team and we will pay your salary in miss token okay so the first is uh contribute to this community and the second one is <laughs> that's why it's uh, actually very interesting. So right now, our official Telegram group has turned into an OTC market for MIST token. <laughs> so if you want, you can trade MIST token inside our Telegram group. But be careful, be very, very cautious, and don't trust anyone. Any, anyone can be scammers. <laughs> okay, okay, great to hear that uh, the token is already traded. Um, inside your community, even though it's not really public. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds sounds very interesting. I also saw that you have um, approximately between 200 and 300 validators on the chain. So is it possible for anyone to join and become a validator? What is required to become one? Okay, basically, uh, if you know some basic knowledge about computer science, you can uh, become a validator. It's, uh, our code is all open source on GitHub, so I, anyone can take a look at it and become our validator. But uh, I heard I heard my dev team once told me that uh, for 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 tendermint consensus, the best amount of validator is around one hundred to two hundred, right? If we surpass two hundred, the, 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 actually the speed of the whole network is going to decrease. So maybe in the future we will apply some uh, requirement or limitation to the validators, but uh, not right now. Right now we don't have any requirement. Okay, I see. I see. Well, you can uh, split the pool of of validators to clusters, for example, and uh, you can uh, change the cluster each epoch, mm -hmm. and then everybody gets a chance to validate, even though um, you have a lot of validators. Like the total number of validators can be much, much bigger than the number of validators that are currently doing the job. So you can uh, pass this to your developers as an idea. Okay, yeah, absolutely. And this way you can scale the total number of validators to any number, to thousands, right? But then uh, those validators who uh, prove themselves to be reliable, to be worthy, they can, be, they can ha have higher chances of being elected in the... Uh, current uh, pool of actually validating ones rather than observing. Okay, <clears throat> okay. so basically we are now uh, observing a birth of a new blockchain and those who manage to jump uh, on that train may may uh, get a lot of a lot of something next year when you guys launch, right? Yeah. Right, or maybe not. Uh, can can you tell us uh, about the Mrs. Portal? What what is the portal? The portal the portal is our staking portal. You can delegate your Mrs. Token to any of the validator, and the validator can set different commission fee or have uh, some discount. Yeah, so right now it's basically uh, our staking portal right now. Okay, okay, I got it. So actually, in order to become a validator, it's not enough to have some knowledge in computer science, you also have to stake the token, the MIST token, right? 
uh, which you can only buy in the Telegram community. Uh, and you have to go to something like this. Uh, right now, we we we, we delegate two thousand MIST token to each new validators, so they don't really need to mm. buy it themselves. We got some. Um, okay, cool. So basically, now is the right time to become a validator because you won't even have to have any tokens to buy any tokens yourself, right? You will get it from the community or like for the, from, from the, what you have a DAO, yeah. right? You will get it from, from the DAO and then next year it's going to be super cool. So basically right now you can join for free, right? Yeah, but you still need to, you still need to pay for your server, right? There's still going to be some cost. Yes, that. yes, that's for, yes, that's for sure. Unless you have one at home. <laughs> no. Um, okay. Um, then actually it's pretty cool guys so if you if you were interested that's an opportunity right you can you can join for free right now yeah all you will have to do is to run the server and next year it might really shoot right yeah <laughs> so uh do you guys do anything with nfts like is this chain going to support nfts are you planning to have some nft standard uh okay so right now uh if you got any nft in the uh in your extension you can see it inside Mrs. Bowser with her wall extension, right? And, and also inside our decentralized social media, if you connect your wallet, which contains an FT in it, it can also display on your personal profile page. Because we think we think that an FT is a unique cultural symbol for yourself. That's why we, 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 we have developed this feature to display it on your personal profile page inside our decentralized social media app. Ah, uh, okay. So you don't even have to go uh, to marketplaces. You can see your NFTs inside your social media D app. Uh, yes, yes. If you connect your wallet to it, we will scan it and display it on your personal profile page. Uh, amazing. So you're... Uh, you have your own indexer of the NFTs, or you are using some third-party indexers, or it's too technical? I think I can remember that we are using a third-party indexer. Okay, yeah. okay, cool, right. Can you tell us more about your roadmap, about your plans, uh, at least for this year, or maybe the next year, if you already know it? Okay. What are we going yeah. to expect? So for this year, right now, we are launching our DAX, which is already integ uh, integrated into uh, our front page. Uh, with this DAX, you can have a seamless swapping experience and, and a good price because it's an aggregating service of different DAXs and liquidity protocols. Right now, we have integrated one inch, which is already an aggregator, and the fee is actually very, very low. And uh, right now, we I think we are integrate your uh, okay x dax and the in the future we will integrate more taxes and protocols in it to help you to have the best price and the best liquidity on the market okay this is for the short term in one or two months and by the middle of this year uh, by which i mean uh, august or september we are we are thinking about to launch our own disinterest domain name system it's called dot uh you can subscribe with an annual fee around 10 us dollar with your miss token and by the end of this year we are thinking about to develop our own disinterest uh, sorry disinterest storage system or integrate a third party disinterest storage system into mrs bowser so you can use it as a decentralized personal Dropbox. And uh, yeah, and also we are thinking about to develop a decentralized marketplace for information DAP, okay? Which means you can basically trade any stuff which does not require logistic on this marketplace, like uh, activation code of game, internet literature, your homemade music, <laughs> stuff like that. So thank you very much. This is our roadmap for this year. Right, and, and the, the main thing is that everything that you just said is available um, in your smartphone, right? You don't need to have a computer to access all those. So that's the main advantage, correct? Yes, absolutely. Right, so uh, maybe the listeners would ask, like, why why should we go to you? The, the answer is because you can do it from 
virtually anywhere where wherever you you have internet, right? Yes, yes. Okay, that's that's very very cool. Um, do you do you think you've already reached uh, the point of success, or you see that success is something that you still have to reach? And if so, what would you define as success? And uh, how far do you think um, you are from from getting there? Okay, yeah, I think for our success, we have reached our first step. Right now, we are delivering some value, real value to our users. They are very happy with Mrs. Bowser because Mrs. Bowser have solved some problem for them. Okay, but right now, our user base is still focused on Nigeria and Southeast Asia. Uh, in those two regions, uh, most people do not have a personal computer. Their only access to Web3 is their mobile phone, so Mrs. Browser is very useful to them, but it hasn't proved that we are a success. So in the future, we are thinking about to expand to more regions where people still, where people have, most people in those regions will have personal computers, but they still have demand to use Web3 DAP on their mobile phones. So if those people have chosen Mrs. Browser, it means that it means that we have reached our second step for success. We have de delivery our value to those who have personal computer, which means it have proven our hypothesis, which is that we can help them to use that on their mobile phone, and it is valuable for them. And so, in the future, and uh, the final step is that uh, when everyone talks about Web3 Browser, they think of Mrs. Browser. <laughs> if we can do that, we are really successful. Right, that's uh, very impressive. Um, can you tell, can you explain me a little bit more about your uh, computer uh, browser? Like I understand the real need and the niche for the mobile browser. Uh, what the users who will use your personal computer uh, browser gain apart from what they have now from Chrome, or other browsers. Oh, actually, like what? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I think I didn't express myself very clearly. So, uh, uh, actually, we are not going to develop a desktop version. I, I'm talking about that in some region of this world, people do not have personal computer, right? So their only access to Web three is their mobile phone. And in those regions, we have proven we are successful, but we haven't proved. We haven't prove, proven that we are successful successful in other regions where people has personal computer. Oh, got it, got it. So anyway, it's going to be a browser extension in the mobile phone, uh, but you're just going to penetrate other markets. Yes. So for example, right, yeah. So oh, okay. yeah. So for example, if a European with a personal computer uh, still use Mrs. Browser, it means that we 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 are valuable for them, right? Yes, obviously, sure, sure. Uh, still, in Europe, if people use public transport, then uh, it's less convenient to pull out your laptop and uh, do something. But a mobile is pretty convenient. Yes. So it makes a lot of but sense. But we want to know uh, that uh, this mm -hmm. can can make them to download Mrs. Browser. Right. Yeah. How are you going to penetrate the European market? Like, what stops you from being there today? Maybe marketing, maybe awareness. Yes, basically awareness, basically awareness. So right now we have actually we have acquired lots of users, right? But when I talk with uh, people from Europe, from from uh, US, and maybe uh, from other regions, they still never heard of Mrs. Bowser. This is our problem right now. We uh, still need awareness in those regions, and by uh, increase uh, so, so what we want to do in the future is that if we can generate stable revenue in the future uh, we will uh, increase our exposure and marketing in those regions so don't be surprised yeah, cool. if you can see mrs well on your mm -hmm. tv in the future <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so you're uh, planning to aggressively advertise uh, to raise awareness in some markets where you are not present at the yes, moment. Yeah. Correct? Okay, cool. That sounds great. Um, in Web3, because usually it, most interactions involve some sort of values, 
like monetary or in, in the form of NFTs or something similar close to that, um, there's always a question of security. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, elaborate more uh, how you uh, secure the transactions in your browser? Did you have any research about uh, potential vulnerabilities and how do you mitigate those? Okay. So basically, the biggest one is the phishing sites, right? Well, there are multiple, <laughs> but okay. Yes, we think the most important security problem in Web3 right now is the phishing sites. So right now, we have integrated the detection of phishing sites inside Mrs. Browser, okay? And actually, it's not based on blacklist or whitelist. We are using an AI module to do it. So, for example, uh, the blacklist method. So, you cannot visit the website inside this blacklist. And the whitelist means that you can only visit the website inside the whitelist. But no, we don't have a uh, neither method. We are using an AI module to do it. Which means, which means, when we build a partnership with a Web3 project, we will add their DAP or extension inside our security whitelist. And when our users are connecting to their wallet extension to a website, our AI module will scan this whole website. And if the similarity of the domain name and also the layout and elements of the website they are connecting to, it's very similar compared to the website inside our security whitelist. There is, a, there is a very high possibility our users are using a phishing site of our partner's project, right? Because the most important characteristic of a phishing site is the similarity. They always look similar compared to the website of famous projects, right? Okay, so this is how we uh, deal with uh, phishing site. And also uh, to decrease our risks, about security is that we are 100% open sourced. So everyone can view uh, our code and join our bug bounty program. Right. Uh, did you already have some people turning to you with uh, bug bounty requests or suggestions how to improve your uh, browser? Oh, actually, we receive report of bug all the time. OK, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, because bug bounty, it's like uh, many eyes are looking at your code, at your product, and uh, basically they're helping you improve it. So as they're saying, two eyes are good, but many eyes are still yeah, better. Yeah, it's the best. Yes. Uh, do you do some auditing in the professional uh, auditing companies, or is it planned maybe in the future? Uh, yes, we do have a um, plan for this in the future, because it's really expensive, right? So we are going to do it after the next round of fundraising, or if we can generate some stable revenue with our DEX. Yeah, great. So it's, it's cool that you care about security and that that's on your plan. It's amazing. Right. Um, do you see any competition in the market in the niche that you uh, found attractive for yourself? Um, are there any other uh, competing mobile browsers? that support Web3 wallets and uh, the apps, or you're like in the blue ocean? Uh, okay, right now, uh, from our own perspective, we don't really think we got any com competitors. But in the uh, eye of a third party, you may think our competitor is Brave Browser or Kiwi Browser, but we are completely different. So on Brave Browser, they are very focused on privacy, so you can only use Brave Wallet on the mobile version of Brave browser, right? But on Mrs. Browser, you can basically download any extensions you want to use to Mrs. Browser, which means we can support more blockchains than Brave. Okay, this is our differentiation compared to Brave Browser. And for Kiwi Browser, actually, we have talked to the developer of Kiwi Browser, and he told us that Kiwi Browser is not really focused on Web3. So the differentiation is that Mrs. Browser is completely focused on Web3. We have been keep optimizing the Web3 dApps and our partners' extension to make sure they can have the best performance on Mrs. Browser and on mobile phones. Okay, so it sounds pretty much like a blue ocean. No competition, or if there is, it's very, very little. Yeah. So potentially, pretty soon, you can become a world leader of mobile Web3 browsers. 
Well, I hope. <laughs> okay, that would be great for all of us. What do you think about the current NFT market? Like we're an NFT bridge. And all we do is we bridge NFTs between multiple EVM and non-EVM chains. Uh, so for us, it's very important that the market is alive, that NFTs are useful. They bring uh, additional value to people. And uh, for that reason, we care. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, since you are also part of the uh, crypto uh, community, crypto world. Okay. Uh, how do you see it? How do you see it now, and uh, what do you see will happen with this market in the future? Okay, so about current situation of NFT market is pretty bad right now. And just a couple of days ago, Azuki team just withdraw uh, twenty thousand Ethereum of the market, right? So most NFTs are dropping right now, and uh, volume is de is also decreasing in different exchanges of NFTs right now. But in the next three years, NFT will continue to be a hot topic in the field of digital assets. And really, I expect to see more diverse application fields. NFT will not only be widely used in the field of digital art, music, game, and real estate, but also in some field like uh, healthcare, maybe finance, and maybe uh, IoT, Internet of Things. And also I expect to see more digital asset types, like uh, in addition to digital art and game items, NFT should introduce more digital asset types, uh, like uh, digital antique, digital uh, sculpture, digital equity, and maybe more. Right, and the uh, names that you will also generate in your uh, DNS, and like Web3 DNS, they will also be NFTs, right? Uh, yeah. Like unstoppable yes. domain? Yes. Right. So those those names are also NFTs, and uh, potentially you'll be able to uh, bridge them between different blockchains, and uh, people will be able to use them everywhere, correct? Uh, yes. Isn't that what XB right. Network doing an uh, NFT bridge? Can you say it again, please? Oh, I, I, I would just say you guys are doing it, right? The, the bridge of NFT across different blockchains. Correct, correct. That's our uh, flagship product, the bridge. Do you have more questions, maybe? <laughs> not really, not really. Okay. Have you integrated many, many other projects? Mm, like when you collaborate with someone, how do you usually do that? Like, do you do uh, call marketing together? Uh, maybe... Mm, you you need to add something okay. in your code to support another project. Okay. Like, what is the pipeline usually? Okay, so usually the first step is going to be the integration, okay? Which means we can feature our partner's dApp or extension inside our dApp store or extension store. Uh, this doesn't really require any uh, modification on the code because most dApps and extensions can work perfectly on Mrs. Files and on mobile phones. And for, for those who cannot run perfectly on Mrs. Browser, we will test them on Mrs. Browser and check out what is the problem. And we will report those problems to our partner's team and to help them to optimize their service. And after doing that, after the integration and the testing, usually we will do some co-marketing like Twitter partnership announcements, like uh, Twitter space AMA, like what I'm doing with, uh, <laughs> with you right now. And also, uh, if both sides have the intention, we can do some uh, co-marketing campaign together, like uh, uh, tasks on different task platforms, maybe some uh, trading competition, maybe uh, some uh, game task as well. This is basically our uh, proposal for partnership. Right, great, thanks for that. Um, are you maybe planning to also launch your own wallet? Because I saw in your GitHub that you have a fork of uh, MetaMask. I don't know, maybe you had it just uh, for, for the sake of uh, testing your browser, or maybe you are planning to launch a wallet. Oh, yes, this is for our own, own wallet, Mrs. Wallet. Because we are not compatible to EVM, so we need to uh, develop our own wallet. Right now, it's actually available on Mrs. Wallet right now. Uh, well, since you don't have questions to ask, and I think I've already asked all my questions and you answered them, uh, so let's uh, finish this AMA. Uh, but before we finish, please tell the audience where we can follow your project, uh, how we can find out more about you, uh, 
um, or maybe something else you want to say or suggest uh, to the listeners. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and guys, if you want to follow up Mrs. Bowser, just follow our official Twitter account. Is uh, I'm talking with this account right now. Uh, basically, we will post an announcement with any of our new developments on this account. And uh, if you can, if you have a computer science background, you can also follow our GitHub. And uh, also, you can join our Telegram group for <laughs> trading this token and uh, join our Discord. Okay, this is uh, those basic are uh, basically our channels for announcements, and uh, yeah, that's basically that. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, thanks for coming. It was a pleasure having you. Um, I'm sure the audience um, is also interested in development of your project, and uh, it's great that we are one of the first uh, to know that you are there, that you are evolving, and that. Um, there is a possibility to do those things uh, right from your mobile, right? Yeah. So good luck to your project. Let's let's keep uh, working together and see you one day um, on another AMA or in a conference. Thank you very much for hosting this student basic AMA. Have a nice one. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.